Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and this is the second video in my series on making a junk journal <clears throat> from when I collect all my items that was in the last video. I showed you my basket that I put things in that I plan to use, and then this one I have pulled items from that basket to make a junk journal, and this is the A Mermaid Tail by Calico Collage are the digital images that I'm using and then things from my scratch my stash <laughs> if you haven't already subscribe to my channel because I do lots of different tutorials here and flip throughs of finished journals there's lots of older videos on stamping and making greeting cards all kinds of things that you can find here and definitely follow me on Twitter Instagram and Facebook join the friendly junk journal people Facebook group we do lots of swaps we share our artwork in there and then there's some things that I'll share in the group that don't make it to YouTube and of course at the end if you like this video give it a thumbs up and then share it with your friends so that they might find me and hopefully they're inspired by the things that I share here today so <clears throat> I've gone in and collected some papers that were in my basket and of those I've chosen five of the Calco collage images I have already trimmed them down to the size of the image which is approximately five by seven it's a little bit over that I printed lines on the back side with my home inkjet printer on the Calico collage pages I chose a paper of it's mulberry paper with some uh, floral inclusions I've got a dictionary page that I've trimmed down to the same size and <clears throat> I have some graph paper that I have trimmed but I left a little extra and I'll show you how I do this with a piece of notebook paper here in just a moment I've already kind of decorated one page because I wasn't really sure how I was going to do it I took a map, so I've got pieces of map that I've cut to the height that I would use in this journal, and then I left it long, so here is an example, I left it long like this, and then I folded over one side, and that created a pocket. I sewed across the bottom and added washi tape, then I added a card on the top, and then I've got a card in the pocket. I used a calendar page over here that I cut because it was six inches wide and stuck it on top. And then this is half of a journaling card because it was six inches wide as well and would not have fit into this journal. On this side, there was some paper that's part of the scrapbook kit that I've picked up or scrapbook pad. And I thought, well, that would make a great belly band. And then this is a map card that can be written on. So just embellishing the map paper gives us a place to write and add some journaling. But it's also some interest because of the pattern of the paper. And it is junk because it was an old map. And in the first video, I wasn't sure where it was from. The one that I ended up using is from New Orleans. So it has a little bit of water on it. New Orleans, Louisiana and uh, Mississippi are in this particular map. On the back side, this is one of those Tattered Angels uh, sprayed papers that I had in my stash from a paper making session. And then I put one of the journaling cards from the scrapbook pad. I use some washi tape across the top and then I added some little mermaid washi tape at the bottom. And I think that's a finished page that's embellished, if you will. I have out a napkin and I have some pages out of a hymnal. These were really thin so I had attached them to a piece of paper that I found in my stash. I have a paper uh, sorting pocket and here's the greens that I have. So whenever I work on something, if I have a scrap left over, if it was a die cut, if it was because I cut a strip for something else, I stick it in one of these pockets. And then when I need a particular color 
or if I need just a piece for something, I'll go pull it out. Well, that's what this piece on the back was because I wanted to make these stronger. And then I have a napkin here that I'm going to use. First, what I'm going to do is I want to show you how I take notebook paper that is from a composition book. In the last video, I talked about that if you go to the center of that book, you can pull the pages out from the center. So open up the composition book and it has stitching down the center. Just cut those stitches free and then you can pull out as many pages as you like. <clears throat> Doing it this way gives me a much larger sheet of paper because if I just use regular notebook paper that didn't come in the composition book, this would not be wide enough, see, to do a page this way. You would have to rotate it around this way, and it bugs me to have the lines going the wrong way. <laughs> I know, I'm strange. All right, so I've got my paper cutter out. And I know that my pages for this particular journal kit, and I base it off of, after it's printed, what the printed pages, so one of the printed pages here, is, <coughs> pardon me, is 10 and a quarter by, and I know you guys can't see this in the camera shop, by seven and an eighth tall. So I'm gonna take this notebook paper and cut it at nine and an seven and an eighth. I don't know why I was saying nine. I guess seven, eight, nine. <laughs> seven and an eighth. And then I place it back in my paper cutter to use as a scoring device. I have a Martha Stewart scoreboard, but it's just more trouble to get it out when I have this paper cutter that I know how to use. And I just line up my page where I know that this ends. And I use a stylus. You could also use a bone folder. And I'll mark this. <clears throat> and I'm marking it because I'm scoring it to fold. So I'm taking this piece where that score is and folding it over, and then I'm going on the other side and folding it over as well. So now I've got this page that when you get to it, you have more writing space on this side. If you so choose, you could attach things to it. So those are my pages. I'm basing this off of a journal that I need to make for someone that requested a mermaid themed journal. She gave me a budget that she wanted to stick with. So I'm using what we did for our Traveler Notebook swap. They needed to have 10 pages or 10 sheets of paper, which equals 40 pages when folded in half, have two pockets, four tuck spots, four journaling spots or cards included, two nice pieces of junk, um, magazine pages, book pages, mop-up pages, maps, comic books, children books, etc. An envelope and two tags. So I have collected the pages. I've already started one of the pages to be embellished. And then I've got items to add to the other pages here. I'm going to begin by <clears throat> attaching a napkin to these hymnal pages that I have here and I've got it sitting out here it is a nautical theme or sea theme napkin and napkins have layers that's what makes them quality is that the more layers they have the more expensive they are and you need to separate those layers and here's how I'm going to do that I've got some tape kind of like scotch tape <clears throat> Well, I call it office tape, if you will, and I place it on the back side of the napkin and just gently pull, and that will relieve one of these layers. I go ahead and just fold up this layer, and I have a stash of miscellaneous papers, like the buckets that I sh or the pockets I showed you earlier, and I'll just stick it in there, and then I'll do the same with the next layer. And just pull these apart. So now I have this really thin layer that I can use to put on top of other paper 
and give it a really cool effect. And here's what I'm going to do. I've got these little pieces here. I've got a piece of wax paper laying down. And I'm going to take some glue stick and I'm going to add glue stick to my hymnal page or music paper. <clears throat> I think I finally finished a glue stick. <clears throat> And then I'm just going to start placing them on my napkin. I'm going to start in one corner. Since this napkin has print all the way to the edge, I'll be able to utilize a lot of it. And I'm just smoothing that out with my hands. And that kind of gives it a neat layer right there. So I'm going to keep doing that with these pieces that I have laid out here. I have a piece of map as well, and there's just enough space at the <clears throat> top of this napkin that I'm going to go ahead and put it on here. The napkins adhere to the pieces of paper that I have selected. So now what I'm going to do is trim these out, and I'll save this napkin that I didn't use today. So now I have these pieces of paper that I have added the napkins to, and I'm going to use some of these as tuck spots or little pockets. So I'm going to go ahead and just sew around the perimeter of all of these with a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. You could make stitch marks by using a pen, but I'm going to go around with my sewing machine. Using my sewing machine, I just went around the edges of each of these pieces and added some zigzag stitches. I'm not worried about it being imperfect because the back side's not going to be seen, except on this one it'll be seen because I'm going to use this as a tip-in page. So the next thing I'm going to do is I've got some brushed corduroy distressed ink and I'm going to go around the edges of these pieces to give some color and Kind of distress it just a little bit so that kind of gives it some more color as opposed to without i'll do that to all the pieces and then i'll come back and show you the next thing i'm going to do I'm going to spray these with some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist because I like the shimmer that it adds. I've got a couple of colors here. I've got Mint Julep, Precious Metal, and Denim Blue. I may not have very much of the Denim Blue. It's almost empty. What I have found that when the Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist is still got a little bit in the bottom, but it's not sucking up into the straw, then I will take bottled water and I will add it to the bottle here, just a little bit. It does dilute the color down a little, but Town of Angels Glimmer Mist is so vibrant that when you get down to the bottom, just adding a little bit of water like this helps prolong it and it'll use up everything that's in that bottle. So see there? It'll take it a moment to pull up. That adds some color. I'm going to add a little bit of mint julep. And then I've got precious metal. I went ahead and added some tattered angels to the back side of this piece because I'm going to use it as a tip out page or tip in page in the journal. So I just kind of spray it a little bit on the back side of that and we'll let that dry. Now that I've, I've got my glimmer mix mist box out, I do like to add glimmer mist to my pages. So what I'll do is I'll just add these pages into my box and just spritz them lightly here and there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of people love to do the 
tea dyeing or coffee dyeing. I've never really been into those colors for all of the pages, but I love the way the Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist looks on a piece of paper and giving it lots of color without it being that brown vintage on everything. So I'm going to spray all of these and I'll come back when they're done. I've grabbed a stencil or two I thought I would use on here as well. I'm getting another piece of paper ready because what I'm going to do is I'll spray and while the stencil's laying down I'll lay another piece of paper on top and that'll pick up any of the spray that's resting on the stencil. So you kind of get two for one. It's faint, but there's a little bit of stenciling on there. And of course this is the page that I sprayed, so it's got some nice color and texture. On my Cricut, I believe it's Doodle Charms was the cartridge that had these little seahorses, so I cut them in a couple of colors. And what I'm going to do is add some Distress Ink and some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist and adhere these together. I'm using the Brutus Monroe glue because it's got a real fine point, not necessarily a fine point, but a small hole, and it will put out just a little bit of adhesive because you don't need a whole bunch and this will keep your paper from buckling and warping. Aren't those turning out cute? I'm going to spray them with some Tattered Angels. I've got the mint julep and the denim blue here and I'll let these dry. And I think I'm going to put some glitter on them. I've got some Telep Dimensional Fabric Paint. It was on sale for $1.79 at Michael's probably about two or three weeks ago. We're in September when I'm filming this. But they have other colors, not just this. But this one's called Confetti, and it has lots of glitter in it. And I thought it would be kind of cool to add some glitter to this little seahorses. So I'm just adding a little bit of glitter kind of where the fins are and where the dots are. I'll add some for the eye and then I'll set this aside to dry. It didn't take very long. If you want to heat it up with your heat tool, you just got to be careful not to get too close or the paint will bubble. But you can speed up the process if you feel you need to. I'm just going to set these aside. I've got a little tray here that I put things in. These cheap dollar store baking sheets come in handy when you're doing something like this because then you can put it in there and set it aside and not set anything on top of it. I've got a little scrap of cardstock here and I've got a mermaid stamp from Stampin Stamp Abilities and I want to stamp this out probably a couple times just so I'll have it as I want to make a little mermaid tail embellishment that'll go in my journal. I've got a couple of chameleon markers or pins. I've got turquoise color topper and then I have lagoon as the pin and I'm going to fuse those and as these fuse that color will go into the other pin and so this will blend really nicely. Isn't that cool how you can pick the two colors from the pin and you get a little bit of variation there. I'm going to take this same tulip dimensional tape or glue. God, I can't talk today for some reason. Dimensional glitter paint. And I'm going to cover this little fin and let it dry. It'll take it a while because I'm putting a heavy coat on. Now I'll set this aside to dry and then when it does, I will trim it out with a pair of scissors. You know, one thing I like about junk journals is I can make elements to go in it. I can use old ephemera and paper. I can recycle trash. There's all kinds of things. This piece of cardstock was kind of dirty, and 
it was old and it's kind of paper that I don't use for making my greeting cards. So I'm trying to use up these types of papers. Well, it's perfect for this because I'm stamping on top of it. I'm going to cut it out. You can't see the original paper when I cut this out. So it doesn't really matter what the foundation was on this particular project. And I'm using up something that to anybody else because it had that on there would have thrown it away. The spray, overspray or something. Now I have here a square piece of map that I've adhered a napkin on top of and I'm going to use April's technique from Pink Odd Bird. It's a patocalope and it's an origami fold if you will. It's supposed to be able to make a cup if you wanted to drink out of it. It could be a little funny little envelope if you will. So here's what I'm going to do. I take this and I fold it in half and then I take this top portion and I fold it down to the middle and this just gives me a guide to work with because then I'm going to take this side piece and match it up underneath the top. This will be an angle on the side and I take the next side piece and match it up at the top and then this will fold down on top. I will glue this and I have a little tuck spot that can be added into my journal. If you want, you don't have to glue this. You can leave it and then you can write on the whole thing. So it depends on what kind of paper you're using, if you have enough surface to write upon. So I think I'm going to do it like this. I am going to go in and add some blue on this portion so I'm going to use an ink pad to do that and a distressing tool and I want this area that's going to be seen to be a little more colorful than the paper So now you can see that a little better. And I want it to be darker on these edges. So I'm going to take the pad directly to the paper. And then I'll use some tacky glue and glue this in place. So I'll just put a little piece of, a little touch of glue here and there to help hold this down. And now that's a tuck spot started to be added to the journal. And then I've got these music note pieces that I made out of the napkins and music and a scrap piece of paper. And I want to put something embellishment wise on here. So I'm going to get some of the, what is it called? Cheesecloth. I have this little bag of confetti and it has... She said she bleh, easy for you to say seashells and some starfish in it and I put the cheesecloth down and what I'll do is I will adhere these on top and so they'll cover this with some glue I'm going to use clear tacky glue and just put a dollop on the sequin and then adhere it on top of the cheesecloth. I'm going to add some more of this tulip paint, just little dots here and there, so it'll look like shimmery things were in the net. On this one, I've got some of these, they're bottle cap style little embellishments, and I thought. These would be kind of neat to place on here. I'm going to place a little bit of glue underneath and that will help hold the cheesecloth into place. And then I'm going to put this embellishment right on top. Well, that is if I don't drop it. <laughs> so that will be a little pocket that will go into my journal. I've got a couple of the images out of the digital kit that I'm going to cut out. These are going to be embellishments. I like the mermaid tail kit. She's put in a lot of neat little elements like these little shells and the sayings. 
I'm going to go around those with some brushed corduroy, and that'll help cover up that white edge and blend the two together. I have this whole stack of papers and embellishments and whatnot to add. I haven't finished this yet, so this is a dictionary page that I folded in half lengthwise, then I fold it in a half again, and then I fold down each corner, and so now when you use this, it becomes a tuck spot. So what I like to do is add washi tape on these pieces to kind of distinguish what's going on. I think before I do that, I am going to give it some color. I want this one to be blue, so I'm going to use my Distress Ink Pad Stormy Sky and add some blue to this dictionary page. Sometimes I'll spray them with Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist as well. So that just adds just a little bit of color. And now I'm just going to add some washi tape. To kind of give it some interest and distinguish each little pocket from the next. And I've added the washi tape on there just to give it some interest and in color, if you will. And I think those look kind of cute. So what I like to do is I've got my pages that I have sprayed and I know what I'm going to put as far as embellishments because I've got them all laid out here but sometimes when I look at my pages I'll decide do I want to put any stamping in here and I've got this little stamp set and I've got another one here and I think I'm gonna do a mix of swim with passion in the sea of life and put it at the top of these pages. I may even do mermaid kisses and starfish wishes and then I may do some of the the starfish like next to that. I'll load this into my misty so that I can get perfect placement. I've got stormy sky and two stamps in my misty. I'm going to see how this turns out and if that's what I want to do. I think that'll work. So what I'll do is I fold the pages that I need to put in here and I'll just put this stamp saying on one side and I'm going to put something else on the other. I've decided that I want a couple of altered paper clips or paper clips that are going to go into this journal. I had a scrap of cardstock left over that is one and a half inches and almost four inches in length. And I fold it in half and then I look at a paper clip and I want the side that is open at the top and the side that has a closed uh, metal closed loop on the bottom. And so then I slide that through on the bottom and I'm going to apply some a lean's tacky glue. I try to put some really close to the paper clip and then out to the edge. I have way too much glue in there, but I like them to be pretty stiff. And so I'll glue these down and it'll take it a moment for it to dry. And then I will shape the bottom into a pennant. So I got two of them here that I'm going to make. Same concept. So I'm just going to make a little snip in the center and then come up from the corners and meet that little snip at the peak. And then I've got a little flag bottom, if you will, or pennant bottom. I've got two little pieces of cheesecloth I'm going to add on here. Sometimes you almost think I've had a stroke whenever I... <laughs> I start to say a phrase and then I stop. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get it. I'm creating as I'm working. So sometimes I stop mid-sentence because I have to think about what I'm doing. I'm just going to put a little bit of clear tacky glue 
where I want the cheesecloth to adhere to my little flag that I made. And then I've got still some of these stickers left over, so I'm just going to grab a couple of them and place them on top. So now I have those as embellishments and holders of papers. Now what I like to do is I try to figure out in which order I'm going to put my pages. So in this case, what I've done is I've got a print that I want to be on the inside front, and then I've got notebook paper, and then I did the calco collage image, the handmade paper with flowers, calico collage. This is a piece that I made that I'm going to adhere onto the dictionary page. And then I've got writing paper from Calco Collage, the map that I've embellished, the graph paper, and then another image from Calco Collage. So that's the center of my book. And as you probably saw, I've already started mapping out where I want to put the embellishments. I find that I like to put the embellishments in before I bind the journal. It kind of gives me an idea of how thick it's going to be and where things are going to come together. The first embellishment that we come to is one of the pockets that I made. I'll just use some Aline's Tacky Glue and I'll make a U shape on this paper, the two sides and the bottom. And then this will be adhered onto the shell page that I have going on here. This patuckalope that I made, and I think I'm going to put it up high in my journal because I have a lot of things that are down low. And I'm going to just put glue on three sides so this becomes another little pocket. And then I just used a card that was with one of the scrapbook pads that I had. And this particular page I need to adhere to the other. And I'm just trying to get this where I can see. And what I'm going to do is line up this edge. And then I'm going to use washi tape to adhere it to the dictionary page. So I'm just opening this up so I can see where I need to apply the washi tape. And I'm just going to pick a washi tape that I think is kind of fun. So this one has shell or scales look on it. And go down. And I'll trim off the extra. And then I flip this open and I'm going to add more washi tape on this side to help keep this together. So now I have this really cool napkin page that I've added to the journal. And what do I want to put on top of that? I think I'll put this little seashell. I want to do something like this. I have these two little bags and I put some journaling cards inside of them. I think it would look kind of cute to put them like this. 
and I'm going to glue on three sides so that if someone gets this they can use that as another tuck spot. I've got a little extra corner here that I cut from two pieces of paper and that has been sprayed with some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. I think I'm going to go ahead and sew around this just to give it another piece of dimension and texture. I'm going to glue this on the back side of my flip out so that there is a journaling spot that can be added or card that can be added. This is the dictionary pocket that I made, so I think it only fitting to put it on the dictionary page. This is a half of a page out of a calendar. I used it in another space in the journal already, so this is the other half. And I'm just going to add this in as a pocket or tuck spot. The little seahorses I made earlier, I'm going to adhere on the bottom of this page. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue where their little tails are. And maybe just a tad where these two little fins at the ends are. So just a little bit of glue, just enough to hold this in place. And then anything that we put behind it should be able to kind of stay in place. There's another one of the little pockets that I made out of the book page and music and napkin. I'm going to put this onto the dictionary page. Here's another little seahorse. This is the saying that is part of the mermaid kit. She is a mermaid. But approach her with caution. Her mind swims at death. Most would drown in. I've got a banner that is part of the Calco Collage Kit. And I've cut it out. So I'm going to use the Distress Ink Brush Corduroy to go around the white edge. And I trimmed out one of the mermaid tails. And I think it would look cute on this little banner, so I'm just going to adhere it down. I've got a little piece of cheesecloth that I'm adding to it. I'm going to adhere this to what's going to be my first page in my journal. I have my cover that I want to make for my junk journal. It is some cardstock that I got out of the Prima paper pad and I just love the way it looks. So this is the paper here and then here is the other side. So I thought that would be great for the cover and then I have one of the images from Calco Collage. It's one of the journaling cards I thought I'd put on here. I also have some cheesecloth in the background and then I have this ribbon that I'm thinking of adding and what I'm going to do is sew these into place this will be a soft cover so I'm just going to sew directly to the cardstock and I'll be back I think I want to put the mermaid tail which was the name of this journal kit onto the cover I've trimmed it down to a size that I think will fit, and then I've got a piece of fabric here that is a scrap. I'm going to trim this a little bit. And then I think what I want to do is go around the edge of this with some Distress Ink. So I've got Stormy Sky here in a blending tool. I'm just going to go around the edge of this, and then I will sew this into place on the journal cover. I think the next thing I want to do is I've got some of this tulip glitter paint. It's fabric paint that I have found. I've shared this before, but it's inexpensive and I love the way it looks. 
So I think what I want to do is put a little bit in her hair to make it look like she's sparkling in the sun, if you will. I'll just put a thin amount. And I'm going to put some on her tail. Kind of mimic looking at shimmering scales. I have some tiny little gems here and I'm going to cut them apart on this little backing paper. And sometimes I use a pair of tweezers to put where I need to, but for some reason they seem to not always want to go where I want when I use the tweezers. So I have this Embelly Jelly by Scrap Perfect, and the idea is that it is like, how do I explain this? You know those um, credit card offers you get in the mail and it comes with little boogers <laughs> that hold them in place? Well, that's a lot what this Jelly Belly is like. It's kind of sticky I can wrap it around the provided stick that has a little point and it's a little bit sticky but not so sticky that it will keep my gem forever and I'm just going to go in here and add a little gem onto this journal cover. See how easy it is to place it where you need to and you just push it down just a little bit and it'll stick. Just added a few little blings on there. The glitter paint is almost dry so I'm going to use my heat tool to speed up that process. So now that glitter glue is dry and she has a little bit of bling in her hair so this is my cover that I'm going to use on my journal. I have gotten all the pages in the order that I want them, so I'm going to put them inside the center of this journal cover, and I've opened up to the very center. I've got giant paper clips. That I have my cover that I want to make for my junk journal. It is some cardstock that I got out of the Prima paper pad and I just love the way it looks. So this is the paper here and then here is the other side. So I thought that would be great for the cover and then I have one of the images from Calco Collage. It's one of the journaling cards I thought I'd put on here. I also have some cheesecloth in the background and then I have this ribbon that I'm thinking of adding. And what I'm going to do is sew these into place. This will be a soft cover so I'm just going to sew directly to the cardstock and I'll be back. I think I want to put the mermaid tail which was the name of this journal kit onto the cover. I've trimmed it down to a size that I think will fit and then I've got a piece of fabric here that is a scrap. I'm going to trim this a little bit. And then I think what I want to do is go around the edge of this with some distress ink. So I've got stormy sky here in a blending tool. I'm just going to go around the edge of this and then I will sew this into place on the journal cover. I think the next thing I want to do is I've got some of this tulip glitter paint. It's fabric paint that I have found. I've shared this before but it's inexpensive and I love the way it looks. So I think what I want to do is put a little bit in her hair to make it look like she's sparkling in the sun, if you will. I'll just put a thin amount. And I'm going to put some on her tail. Kind of mimic looking at shimmering scales. 
I've removed the paper clips that were holding this together. So now I, what I need to do is go through and add some of the ephemera and bits and pieces that I have over here and possibly make a couple more things if necessary to go inside the journal. So right here on the front there is a tuck spot. So let's grab a something or another. Here's a little tag that I'll put there. This folds out. There's room here for a tag. So this is one from the paper collection. Let's see if it fits. It fits. There's a patuckalope with the tuck spot there. I don't think it's deep enough. That would stick out too much. Let's see if I have one smaller. I probably don't. Yeah, so we'll just leave that one like it is. I will add a embellished paper clip here and then just add another scrap of paper. These already had journaling cards inside of them. Then we've got this pocket here. This is one of the stamped images that I made from another journal making session. And I think she's pretty, so we'll put her in there. Then we've just got some more journaling cards that will pop in the back. And there'll be plenty of room here for journaling. Another little card. Let's see. Let's find one smaller. Here we go. This one already has a journaling card in it. has one on this side as well. This flips out. There's the center with the little seashells in them. And apparently I didn't get enough glue on this one. I'll put this clothespin on here for now just to help hold that. This already has some journaling cards that I made. These are from the Summer Paradise from Calico Collage that I'm putting in with the seahorses but you can still see the mermaid behind. It's another tag from Calico Collage. This is just a journaling card from a pad of paper. So journaling card here and then space to write on this teal area. There's another mermaid stamp set that I got from the UK. It's a magazine that came with the stamps. I just really like it. So we'll put that there. It's too big. That one. That one will fit there. It's a little snug, but it fits. Here's a journaling card spot there. That big one fits there. I made this out of a Tim Holtz die and a book page behind it that I sprayed with Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist and then I backed it with some cardstock so that that could be a journaling card. And then there's the back cover. The only thing that I might do that I haven't yet is add another element inside this cover here. Let's do this one. So I'm just going to add this inside the cover here and this will be a corner tuck spot that another card can be added. And I think this little tug coat cruise liner can go right there. So there's the journal that I made using the supplies that I had in my kit. And I'm going to wrap it with a tie of some of this teal ribbon. I just slide it through the binding on the journal and then just wrap it around to the front and tie it in a bow. I hope you enjoyed seeing this video of how I use my supplies by setting them aside for a theme and make a junk journal. This will be my simple 
simple soft cover junk journal. I am going to make another journal with the same leftover supplies that I had from this kit and it will be a multi-signature with a spine and book cover that I'll make from scratch. So I hope that you will move on to that next video and see that as well. If you have any questions, comments that you want to make, do that below. Make sure that you like and share this video with my friends and I hope that it inspires you. Definitely try to make a junk journal. It is a lot of fun. There's a lot of ways to do it and in my opinion there's no wrong way to do it. There may be a wrong way to apply glue to something because it didn't stick but otherwise when you put things together if you like it it's yours do what you love and don't ever let anybody tell you that it's not good enough if you enjoy it do it have a good time with it take a you know this moment to do that thanks so much for watching everybody have a fabulous day bye